All right, so this video is on scientific method. It's seven slides long, so it should be pretty short. Um, we, hopefully you got a good dose of scientific method in biology, but just as a quick review, uh, there are five main steps that we want to go through when we talk about scientific method. Uh, make sure you identify a problem. Make sure that the problem is testable, okay? You want to gather data about your problem. Um, this is some form of research. It could be uh, internet research. It could be publication research. It could be talking to people that know um, something about the topic. Once you've identified your problem, you have some data, uh, you want to come up with a hypothesis. This should be an if-then statement, and it has to be testable, okay? Um, once you have all that, you test your hypothesis, you do an experiment, and then you analyze your data. When you analyze your data, you're really just asking one question. Um, does the data support the hypothesis or do you need to reject the hypothesis and start over? Um, now, you can see from this flow chart that if the data does agree, right, you follow the yes uh, arrow there, you still test the hypothesis again. You should do um, three to four trials in order to get valid data. If your data doesn't agree, follow the arrow on the left, you go back, you rewrite your hypothesis, and then you start your tests again. Uh, when you make observations in chem, something that we're going to talk a lot about is just your five senses. Um, anytime you're, you're using one of those five senses, we call it an observation. Um, now, that stuff should be pretty familiar from bio, but in chemistry, we start to look more at something we call the system. Uh, and the system is the given region of space that you're actually studying. Okay, so defining the system is important for math problems and important for uh, how you analyze your data, because if it's not in the system, it's in the universe, and we want to um, kind of categorize if energy is moving into the system from the universe, if the system is losing energy to the universe, things like that. Um, and when we look at that data, we can classify it into two different things. We can either call it qualitative data, which is language-based data, things like uh, it smells good or the kid is happy, or, you know, the uh, sulfur is yellow. Those are all qualitative data points. Um, or we can have quantitative data. Quantitative data is numerical data. Um, things like 45 miles an hour, 12 nanometers, measurements, right? Things that we take or uh, that we check with a tool. So that's the kind of data that we'll see in class. Now, when it comes to our hypothesis, just to make sure that the hypothesis is testable, okay? Make sure it's an if-then statement. Um, that's not always the format that we put a hypothesis in, but it is the easiest to make sure you have a test, okay, or have a testable statement. So, you know, without the if-then, some of your variables get lost. It, it becomes more difficult to organize things. So, um, usually we say if the independent variable, then the dependent variable. So we might say something like, um, if you give steroids to earthworms, then they will crawl faster. That would be uh, one that we use in my biology class. So if it's not testable, you can't design an experiment around it. If you can't design an experiment around it, then you can't figure out, you know, if you have good data or bad data, if you have good experimental design. So the big thing with the hypothesis is just making sure that it's testable. Now, once you've done your experiment, you gather your data, probably the most important part of an experiment is how you analyze the data. And more often than not, you do that by creating either a chart or a graph. And, and here we have a graph. Um, and looking at your graph, you should uh, have a title. You should have labels on your axes that tell you what's being measured. Uh, the independent variable always goes on the x-axis. The dependent variable always goes on the y-axis. Remember that the dependent variable is the thing that you measure, all right? So growth is something I measure with a tool, with a ruler. Um, and, you know, the independent variable is something that I, I modify, I change. So we are choosing which days here, uh, how much time to let elapse between our measurements. So when we look at this, you know, graph, we're looking at the effect of this fertilizer on plant growth, okay? And we can see that with no fertilizer, our control group, the plant does grow. It gets about five centimeters tall. 
Uh, with 10% fertilizer, we just double that about to 11 centimeters. Uh, and then we see that 25% fertilizer and 50% fertilizer both result in about 25 centimeters of growth. So more than likely, the hypothesis for this experiment was if you add fertilizer to you know, plants, they're going to grow better in a given amount of time. I would definitely say that the data supports that hypothesis. But something else that we want to get from analyzing our data is the fact that 25% phosphorus fertilizer does the exact same thing that 50% phosphorus fertilizer does. And since fertilizer costs money, something that we can pull out of this graph is you're wasting your money if you use more than 25% fertilizer on your crop. So not only do we want the data to identify something about our hypothesis, whether to reject it or whether to accept it, we also want to take it a step further and figure out if we can, you know, pull something out of the data that is useful. Now, when you have a whole lot of data, um, you can publish that data, right? Other scientists can then go in and, and repeat your experiments. Um, and over a period of time, if, if a large group of scientists repeat your experiments over and over and over again, and they consistently come up with, you know, uh, um, an acceptance of your hypothesis, then that hypothesis might get elevated up to a theory. So a theory is not an educated guess in science. That word in science means hundreds and hundreds of experiments have been carried out and every single time this hypothesis has come up as true. So a theory defined is just a broad generalization that's going to explain a body of facts or phenomena. In other words, um, we have not looked at every single living thing, but cell theory tells us that all living things are made of cells. And every time we look at a living thing under the microscope, we find cells, and so we accept the theory. Now, the difference between a theory and a law is that a law typically has a mathematical expression. Uh, some things, the best they're going to get is a theory because there's no way to test every single thing in order to determine that it's 100% true. And without that mathematical equation, um, we can't always verify it. So, you know, as far as the hierarchy of acceptance, you know, the law is always right. The theory is on its way to becoming a law or at least a general accepted fact. And then a hypothesis is something that's still being tested. Now, atomic theory is something that we'll learn about in class. And atomic theory is a theory. We haven't checked every single thing in the entire universe to see if it's made of atoms. But atomic theory says atoms are the smallest building blocks of elements and everywhere that we have checked that has held true. Some other things about atomic theory that are um, still being investigated are what the atoms themselves are made of. So we know that atoms are made of uh, protons, neutrons, and electrons, but we also know that those particles are made of smaller particles uh, called quarks. And quarks are made of color charges. And every time we look a little closer, we start to find more things. So those theories are constantly being added to. When you have a good theory, you can create a model. Um, on the right of this slide here, you can see the structure of a plant cell. Obviously, a plant cell doesn't really look like that. It's not color-coded. Um, it's not, you know, when you look at it through a micros microscope, it's not conveniently full of cutaways that lets you see the inside of, of different structures. Um, and so a model is just something that we use to visualize the theory. And this would be another model, right? This is buckyball. Um, it's 66 carbon atoms. Obviously, in real life, it's smaller than this. So models can be visual representations of things. They can also be verbal representations of things, right, um, or mathematical descriptions. When you look at um, a simulation of the weather, that is a mathematical visualization of what is likely going to happen uh, when you look at the future radar. So a model is just something that's going to predict how a phenomenon will occur. And we'll see a lot of models in class. Just to kind of sum everything up, when you're looking at the scientific process overall, um, this is kind of your BS detector. If you hear something about a scientific topic or about any topic, and it doesn't follow roughly at least this outline, then that should be a red flag to you. If there's not you know, good observational technique. If people aren't measuring things, experimenting things, talking with others about them, if they're just putting out there something that they know, eh, that should be a red flag. 
your hypotheses should organize data. They should classify things. They should make inferences, right? And if it's just, I know this for no reason, well, then more than likely they don't know this, okay? So we want to make sure that in science, things that are put out there follow this line of reason. Overall, we should have observations, a hypothesis, a test. That test should either support the hypothesis or reject it. If it supports it, you keep going. You construct theories, you build models, you start to predict future outcomes. When, when you get that far, you need to publish it, right? So we, we put these things in journals. We communicate with other scientists. Those scientists should validate our ideas by doing other tests. And, you know, in the long term, when many people uh, validate an idea, it can become a generally accepted scientific fact. So that is scientific method. If you have questions, shoot me an email. And I'll see you guys.